In my late twenties, my close cousin, we will call her Joan, her husband and her son ended up on hard times. They had no choice but to move into her sister's house, we will call her Kate, which was already occupied by Kate, her husband, and the grown man that they took care of. I was invited to come and visit, which I was eager to do. Joan and I brewed coffee, called out for pizza, and spent hours playing Yahtzee, which was not unusual for us. We were being silly and competitive as usual. It was getting late, and I said I wanted to head home. Joan told me to follow her to the basement, where Kate and her husband had a small apartment in the house, to say hello since Kate and her husband just got home. Joan tried to turn on the basement stairs light, but it was burnt out. I told her no problem, I would just take it easy. I could hear her walking ahead of me, and just then, I saw a man walking up the stairs, which he had to have walked through Joan. This is weird because it was jet black and no light at all on the stairs. I could see him as plain as day. He wore a white t-shirt and blue jeans, no shoes, dark black hair, and blue eyes, and it looked like he had not shaved his chin or under his nose. He walked right through me. I stopped in my tracks. I could not shake the image or the weird feeling of having him walk through me. It happened so fast. I could hear Joan at the end of the stairs yell up to me, Where are you? I'm coming, I answered. Shaking off what happened, I proceeded down the stairs and met up with Joan. I could see a light in what looked like a living area that was through a set of French-style doors in the basement. Joan knocked, and we entered for me to have a short chat with Kate and her husband. They had another entrance in the basement and stated I could use it to get to my car. I did not say anything to anyone who lived in that house because I thought I was out of my mind. A few weeks later, Joan called asking if I could get over there as soon as possible. I jumped in my car not knowing what was going on. Joan met me in the driveway. It was about nine at night when I got there. Joan was home for the first time since they moved in alone. She was hysterical. After I calmed her down, I got her in my car because she would not go back into the house. I asked what happened. She said that she had just done laundry and was folding it on her bed watching TV when suddenly she could hear children crying in her closet. She opened the closet and found nothing and the crying stopped. She went back to what she was doing and she could hear the crying again, a woman's scream and a gunshot. That is when she called me. I convinced her to show me where it happened and wanted to check it out for myself. We entered the house and it was so eerily quiet. We went to her room, I opened the closet and poked around. I stood in there listening. Nothing. I then went outside and checked around the house with a flashlight I found lying on the kitchen counter. Nothing. I decided to stay with her until her husband came home. He was out at a friend's party or something. We sat on her bed just chatting away and folding her clothes when I heard it a faint child sob. It started faintly until it became a fearful, heart-wrenching sob. I jumped up and whipped open the closet door and the noise stopped. I was bewildered. Not scared, just bewildered. Joan was terrified. I took her hand and we spent the time in the living room until her husband came home. My mother worked at the police department in meter enforcement, but I knew several officers because I hung out at the station or visited my mom there. I decided to visit my mom that next Monday, just before the end of her shift, to see if I could get some information on if something happened at my cousin's home. I was able to talk to a lieutenant that remembered that address. From what I can remember, a family of four lived in the house. For some reason, the father became enraged and the mother hid the children in the closet as well as herself. The father came in and shot them all. Later, after leaving a note, hung himself in the tree in the backyard. Kate and her husband continued to live there until the man they took care of passed away. However, Joan and her family moved a month later. I worked as an LNA, licensed nursing assistant, for this nice resident facility in Concord, NH. 
The first year I worked there, I volunteered to work a night shift after a long day shift because we were short-staffed. After all the residents went to bed, all the LNAs gathered in the floor lounge to get our books done and up to date. We were in there for quite a while when a light went off at the end of the hall. Knowing this resident most likely needed the restroom, I rushed to her side. When I entered, I saw a black, floating mist above her. She was hysterical, pointing to the mist and saying it was here to get her. I am not a religious person, but wanted to calm her and I knew I could not acknowledge the mist above her. It is not unusual for these kind of strange things to happen in these types of facilities. I turned off the light and held her hand. We prayed. The mist vanished. I calmed her down and stayed with her until she went back to sleep. I creeped out of her room and went back to the lounge. I reported what I saw to the others, but we cannot report it in our books. I found out that this mist had been seen in several rooms on the night shift for weeks. Another experience I was working with a night shift LNA that volunteered to work the day shift on my floor. I was friends with him outside of work as we were both writers. It was getting to the end of our shift, and we had brought our residents to the bathroom and readied them for activities that took place in the basement where most of the administration was located. The other LNA and I brought our last residents to the activity and were walking back to the elevator. We were not walking the stairs, even though it was just one flight up. It was a long day. We saw someone walk out of the bathroom ahead of us and went around the corner to the elevator. I holler, hold that elevator. We were only seconds behind. We turned the corner, but no one was there. The other LNA and I just looked at each other. There was no place that this person could have gone. It was a dead end. I asked if I was going crazy, did you see that person? The other LNA agreed. Where did they go? It took forever for these elevators to go from floor to floor, and this time of day there were tons of visitors and the change of shifts. The elevators would take longer to get back down to the basement. One of our residents turned 100 years old, and she had called me in to read a letter she received from the President of the United States. George W. Bush, Jr., at the time. I had a few days off from work. When I returned, I had heard the awful news that she left us in her sleep. The nurse on duty on that floor in our staff meeting read a note that her alarm, light, kept going off. Just then, the panel showed a light going off in that room. I thought it was the roommate. I volunteered to see what she needed. I entered the room, and the roommate was nowhere to be found. The light was coming from the empty bed of the resident that passed. I shut it off, thinking it was a fluke. After that, it seemed to keep going off minutes after you shut it off. I volunteered to go to the empty top floor where we kept the extra supplies to get a new plug. I came back down and replaced the plug. Before I left the room, the light went off again. I removed the plug, but forgot the failsafe that if you remove the plug for any length of time, the light would go off. Just then, I asked the nurse, Did anyone leave the window open after she passed? The nurse looked at the note. Nope, no one did that. It is not unusual that after a passing in a residential facility, you open the window. It is the belief that it allows the spirit of the deceased to escape. I reattached the plug and opened the window. At the end of my shift, I closed it. The light never went off for the rest of my shift after I opened the window. The next day there were no reports of that light going off. I-19F was out to eat with my boyfriend, and the place we were eating at had a live show right next door. We decided to listen to some of the bands playing once we were done eating. It was around 9 p.m. at this time. Shortly after going outside, a girl came up to me and started talking to me about all kinds of things. She had bright red hair, many piercings, and tattoos. The first thing she did was compliment what we were wearing. I wasn't wearing anything special, just a plain pink dress with Crocs. 
She seemed very friendly and continued the conversation, mainly with me. I figured it was because I have piercings and a tattoo. Maybe that's why. I also chalked it up to her being drunk or just overly friendly. Eventually, she asked me a weird question that I didn't really understand and can't recall exactly. It was something along the lines of, What's your purpose here? Or something similar. I just remember not understanding what she was asking and just telling her where I worked because it sounded like that's what she was asking me. She said she works at the strip club in the same town and invited me to come dance. She left abruptly after, while texting on her phone and went over to this guy. My boyfriend and I went to leave, I thought nothing of it, and we passed by them. After turning the corner, my boyfriend told me to check and see if I was being followed. I looked behind my shoulder and didn't see anybody. I walked a little further and looked back again. And there was the guy. He was walking extremely quickly and caught up pretty fast. He followed me all the way to my car, which was at least a mile away until we got in and locked the doors. He was just a couple of feet away from my car before he turned around. My boyfriend told me to start the car ASAP, and once we left, he told me that when he passed by them, he heard the girl say to the guy something along the lines of, she's a little nervous, but... and he had a bad vibe that I was being targeted for sex trafficking, or that they were going to try to pimp me out. Maybe they intended to snatch me up, I don't know. It wouldn't have been very hard for him to do. He was easily at least double my weight, as I'm only 100 pounds. He was following with a lot of speed, and I mean really, what was the motive? Sorry if this is really long, I'm just a little creeped out.